Terenibol, T-ball, chloral, dehydromethyl testosterone. This is the post-World War II Cold War agent of cheating from East Germany. What an amazing story, and we'll see it today. Used currently today as a moderate oral anabolic steroid, used for bulking, and it's also used for cutting. It's very rarely used alone, though. It's used mostly by men, but some women try using this agent. It's known as baby D-ball, otherwise known as dry D-ball. We'll see why. And thought to be relatively safe, but I can tell you that is not true. The history of T-ball to Renabol, patented in 1961 during the Cold War by the East German state-owned pharmaceutical company called Genopharm. This is during the time that Eastern Europe, after the Cold War, had to attempt to dominate the world only through their athletes because they were hammered down at this point. As everyone knows, there was that divide, the Berlin Wall, from East and West Germany, from the East and the West of the world. So, the scientists during this time period realized they wanted to have the best athletes known to man. They looked at D-Ball initially from the late 50s and they realized that it was a very strong steroid and it was just getting traction. But it caused too much water gain. And who are these athletes they wanted to dominate with? Swimmers and gymnastic experts. These people can't have too much water gain. So they looked at this drug specifically for this reason. Amazing history of science. In 1965, this medication came onto their market only as a medicinal agent. Now, I cannot find any evidence of this agent being marketed outside of East Germany. So this was a cloak. This was only to show the world that we're making this drug and we use it for medical purposes, but it was not used for medical purposes. It was the only steroid in the world developed solely by scientists for cheating purpose. And indeed, from 1968 to 1989, before the collapse of East Germany, it was used on over 10,000 athlete students some as young as 10 to 12 years of age, equally used on women as well as men. There was a piece of state literature, a law that was passed called State Plan Topic 14.25 that stated that we have to dominate the world through our sports and anything goes, doctors, scientists, the citizens that they chose would be part of this state plan 1425. Of course, the collapse of the Berlin Wall, the disassociation from the East and the West in 1991. In 1994, Jenner Pharmaceuticals discontinues this agent. And then in 1996, Schirling from Germany purchases Jenner Pharm. It's the end of the story. This drug is not produced currently today, medically, by any pharmacy in the world, solely underground. The pharmacology and structure of this amazing historic anabolic steroid. It's a derivative of testosterone, but it's also a derivative of Dynabol that everyone knows, with the addition of another steroid close to ball. Now, how does it work? We have the initial structure of testosterone and there is a classic 17 alpha alkylation administered that makes it an oral steroid, number one. Number two, there's an introduction of a double bond across the atoms carbon 
one and two. This makes dienobol. This is dienobol. Now, the attachment of a chloral group at the fourth carbon atom, this is the similar aspect of clostobol, which is four chloral testosterone. Now, this is a very light, very low and weak anabolic steroid currently used medically for topical dermatologic preparations. Now, the half-life of terenobol is about 16 hours. So unlike many other steroids, it's used daily dosing. This is an anabolic steroid that has a very low androgenic property scale, actually either zero or difficult to measure or as low as six. Now, it's half as anabolic as testosterone without aromatization. Side effects of this drug, estrogenic side effects. Used as a sole agent, it does not have any aromatization properties. It doesn't esterify. That is because of the addition of the four chloral group. Now, so in theory, using this drug as a sole agent, there'll be no gynecomastia, there'll be no or limited water gain and weight gain, and you'll just get good, lean, quality muscle. And that's what people think. And some people tell me it's true. Androgenic, because it's a low androgenic steroid. And like Dianabol, it has a very low affinity for 5-alpha reductase. So there should be very limited male pattern balding, acne, and shutdown of the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. But we know this is not true. Now, we know this drug is not used alone or very rarely. People may start with this drug. There's a lot of people that I've learned as the anabolic doc that start with this drug because they, they think it's soft. They think it's, it's like Anavar, between Anavar and Winstrol, people tell me. And they think it's a good soft starting agent and it may be for them. Uh, but in the end, it's not used alone. It's used with other steroids. Now, the other interesting side effects or utilities of this drug is it's known for significantly affecting sexual and binding globbing and lowering that, therefore freeing up free testosterone. Now, let's talk about that. If it's used alone, it certainly will lower all anabolic steroids, oral steroids, Winstrol, Anavar, they will lower significantly sexual and binding globin. So in theory, they do free up and liberate the person's, the man's free testosterone. But at the same time, it will cause a shutdown of the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. And we see that classically because in the end, this agent, among others, can cause anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. So if it's used alone, the period of time where it liberates and increases your own free testosterone is transient, and then over a period, it will certainly lower your endogenous testosterone. So, used, terenobol used with testosterone, that's the most classic combination, historically. It certainly, again, with a transient time period, will increase the free testosterone. Now, when you use esters of testosterone, you're gonna have and overloading the sexual and binding globins, other binding globins, and you're gonna have in the circulation, depending on dose in the man, you're gonna have a significant increase of free testosterone anyway, even with TRT regimens. So do you really need this drug to further increase free testosterone by lowering sexual and binding globin? It's unnecessary to me. It's a moot point. I don't see it of any functional value. Now, the other side effect is very interesting and very true. If you look at the women from this period of time, from the 1960s and 70s in East Germany, not to mention all around Europe and that part of Europe, Eastern Europe, these women definitely had secondary male sex characteristics. You could just see it in their face and loss of hair. So now, were they using Terenobol just by itself? I've seen histories some primary and some secondary that women have used this for a period of time. And they've realized during that time period, they had very slow changes 
to secondary male sex characteristics. But over time, they certainly had these effects and they were significant for some of these women. But a lot of these women athletes will tell you that they didn't use this agent alone. They used different agents over time. Remember, these athletes were athletes for many, many years and many of these athletes unfortunately started using these drugs because the state forced them to uh, when they were teenagers or even before teenagers. Side effects continued. The most classic side effect is going to be it's a 17 alpha alkylated drug, so orally administered. People think it's going to be weak and not liver toxic. This is not true. Let me tell you a quick story. I had a man from another country that used this drug only by itself for well over a year, maybe even two years. And he was scared of needles and he thought because the athletes used it in the 60s and 70s, including women, he thought, he told me that this must be a safe drug and it works. And it did work very well for him. He ended up coming to America because he had liver failure and he was significantly jaundiced and he was sick. And he had a condition called pileosis hepatis, which is blood filled cyst in the liver. And he ended up in Johns Hopkins in our country and they removed parts of his liver and he actually did very well. Um, I lost follow up with this man I'm sure he's not going to use steroids ever again. Next, and classic side effects of any steroid, specifically oral antibiotic steroids, are going to be in the cardiovascular system. This drug by itself, I see that it devastates and lowers HDL. It can cause left ventricular hypertrophy. We assume muscles grow, so does the heart. It's a muscle. It can also lead to worsening of either existing or non-existing coronary artery disease through the progression of plaque. Now, this all ends up causing endothelial and myocardial disease of your heart, and this is very dangerous. It is interesting that this drug used by itself because it does not aromatize, and therefore there'll be minimal to, to very low amounts of water puffiness gained. It certainly is not a medicine used by itself that will lead to hypertension but don't think that that's gonna be a safe agent. Now, in the end, this drug is not used alone. It's always used in concert with other drugs. I can't say it's a safe drug. I could just say this is the history of the drug and it's a mild to moderate oral anabolic steroid. Please be very careful. As I provide this information for you for educational purposes because anabolic steroids are so powerful. The history of them is so amazing that it needs to be known. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.